A tempting finish to any meal is something sweet. And a longtime candy maker in South St. Louis is busy creating holiday themed chocolates. Kara Vanninger was more than happy to pay a visit and give us a peek inside its operation. Burbs Candies has been a sweet spot in South City since 1921 and seemed like the perfect place to watch the creation of favorite holiday treats. When you walk in and the belts are going and they've, chocolate is everywhere, you kind of walk in and think, is this what heaven smells like? <laughs> but once inside, I discovered something far better than the scent of roasted pecans and the taste of buttery caramel. The generosity, loyalty, and joy exuded by the staff, led by owner Terry Bearden, isn't just for the holidays, but something they exhibit quietly year-round. Although the store on South Grand has carried the Merb name for nearly a century, the business itself has actually changed hands twice. We're the third family who's owned it. It was Emma Merb, and then it was Kenneth Practor, and it was my family. My dad saw it in the New York Times for sale, because it wasn't in the St. Louis paper, and he bought it, like late 60s, early 70s. That's how we got in the candy business. All of us kids had to come work. We used to have to roll creams by hand. You had to put one here, one here, and one here, and roll it like this, and it was really hard to do. And so one year, my dad says, okay, we have to have a meeting. Do we want to go on vacation, or do we want a cream machine? We have the cream machine to this day that we're still using. We have a marshmallow machine that's made in the late 1800s. It was from Purity Candy. We're one of the few people in St. Louis that make their own marshmallow. That's why it's a good, soft marshmallow. Homemade marshmallow puts the heavenly in Merb's heavenly hash, one of many holiday favorites. Peppermint bark, nuts roasted in-house, chocolate stars, bells, and of course their old-fashioned Santas can also be found in stockings and on Christmas tables all over St. Louis. Santa is an old-fashioned Santa that we still carry. It's two pieces, and what we're going to show you is at the end, it's going to appear to be a single piece. These are the ones that were poured earlier. And Santa then becomes popped out. And he has a little edge to him. The girls will come in and start trimming. The process by which it becomes a solid piece of chocolate. Um, when you look at it, you would never have known that it was in a two-piece mold. It's important to us that this be part of the tradition of the type of chocolate Santa that we make. A lot of people have gone to skipping this stage, but to us it, it's just as important as the quality of our chocolate. Snappers, which are also in high demand, contain a caramel recipe invented by Terry's father, Robert Wright. This is the same caramel that turned a regular piece of fruit into a delicious force to be reckoned with. Although only produced and sold for a short time in the autumn, the famous Merb's Bionic Apple elevated a beloved neighborhood candy store to a nationally recognized name, all thanks to the perseverance and ingenuity of Terry's dad. First he did it with pears, and pears were too perishable. In the beginning, he had to give the apples away. Nobody wanted them. When he invented the recipe for the caramel, there was a recipe here, but it didn't have that butter taste at the end, and that's what he strived for. When you took your last bite, you still had a buttery taste in your mouth. The phone kept ringing. Oh, is the bionic man there? Is the bionic apple there? And I go, Dad, we're getting pranked. And he goes, oh no, come watch the news with me. And there was a bionic commercial. And that he had had it and he wasn't telling anybody. And it was a surprise. And it was like this bionic apple flying across the sky like the bionic man, because that was hip then. Growing up as part of a family business and then raising her own children there has given Terry a lifetime of unforgettable experiences. One of my fond memories is on Thanksgiving, we always had a chocolate turkey for breakfast because you were gonna blow the day anyway, my dad said, so why not just start at breakfast? I had a porta crib and my daughter used to get in the porta crib and when the customer would come in, I'd roll her into the store and wait on the customers and then roll her back into my office. If my kids were in trouble, they had to scrub the floor. That was their punishment, but they were very fond memories and it was a really good thing that all of us could be together. And it's really nice that my daughter's here with me now and her husband. It's just still going to be passed on. I'm very blessed 
that my business is still successful. Um, it's really hard to be a little guy anymore. But it's the little guys like Merbs that turn simple experiences like the giving and receiving of candy into memories. Their size allowing them to constantly monitor taste and appearance and utilize old practices such as the hand marking of their chocolates. Say there's like two candies or three candies that all look alike, you'll have a marking, a different marking, so when we're packing them, we know what's a caramel, what's a coconut, what's a chocolate caramel, what's a fudge. Quality controls at the end. If, if, if the marking's not correct, they, they put it off to the side. <laughs> Quality control. I am fully qualified for this. Oh yeah. Nice work. Yeah. It's awesome. For Terry, Keeping tradition extends far past sticking to the fastidious quality and presentation of their product. Over the years, her family has maintained Merbs as an anchor for the neighborhood, reaching out in a variety of ways to the immediate community that has supported them for decades. We have a lot of people that come and they bring their children because they were here and they'll go, oh, it smells so good in here. And I don't realize that, but like if you wear a coat in and then you go to like a store, people go, I have no concept of the smell anymore. But proximity to product hasn't taken away Terry's enjoyment of it. I eat a cashew cluster for breakfast sometimes. Would you buy candy from a skinny girl? No. <laughs> that's what I always say. That's, that's a great line though, would you? We eat lean cuisines for lunch, but then we'll eat a piece of candy or two with it. So it all works out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, the March of Santa, he's coming. I just always remember my friends being here, family when we needed help, somebody would always come. It's just been a nice family thing.